What's up, everybody? It's Scott Baer here, your host of Falcons Final Whistle. And before we dive into this episode, a quick listener note. Tori, Chris, and I recorded this episode before Tuesday morning's announcement by Tom Brady that he has officially retired. So there is some outdated discussion about whether he will or won't come back for the 2022 season. Now it's official, and the core of this episode remains intact as we discuss how the Falcons will be impacted by Tom Brady retiring and by Sean Payton stepping away as Saints head coach. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scotty Bear. I'm staring via Zoom at Tori McElhaney, and Chris Rim is in Mobile, Alabama at the Senior Bowl. What's going on, guys? Chris, how uh, how is Alabama so far? Sorry. It, uh, <laughs> it, never, never been here before. Never thought I would be. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I'm a couple hours in, so, you know, just surviving out. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay. let's let's try to keep the expenses to a reasonable amount maybe <laughs> possibly i don't know you and terry fontenot may be out till the wee hours of the morning but just use his corporate card okay, okay. <laughs> there's only really one way to say like anything about being in alabama it's just like oh you're in alabama and it's like yes <sighs> i'm here yep. and that's all you have to say you don't have to say anything else and <laughs> we we planned on doing the second question of the week and have it be senior bowl slash NFL draft related. And then Sean Payton did a thing. And then <laughs> Tom Brady did like another thing, maybe, probably. Yeah, maybe a thing. We maybe don't know thing. if it's a thing yet. <laughs> because uh, the GOAT hasn't announced it's a thing. But nonetheless, uh, Sean Payton earlier last week, um, and th- that's officially official. He's stepping away from the Saints as their longtime head coach, the man who brought them the Super Bowl, uh, who partnered with, with Drew Brees to make uh, the Saints a very good team for a very long time. He is officially stepping away, uh, at least for the year. He's not going to be a head coach anywhere. Uh, the Saints, that's a big transition for somebody who is an institution down in New Orleans. And then on Saturday afternoon, anybody with a phone, or ears uh, heard that according to, and I'm, I have to phrase this appropriately, right? Per right, a yeah. report by Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington, citing multiple sources, I'm not going to say it this way every time. They said <laughs> that, that Tom Brady is going to retire after 22 seasons. Chris was, were you born when, when he was playing? <laughs> I have no clue, but that's my entire life. So yeah, it's your entire life. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember a time when Tom Brady wasn't playing. I think I was because I'm 26, so I was like four years old. Oh, that's adorable. Please don't tell Drew Bledsoe those facts. He won't appreciate it. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, it from Adam Schefter and ESPN that he's expected to retire. Um, NFL Network kind of backed that up as well. We're going to see on all that, but nonetheless, there is a very strong, or there's a possibility that the NFC South could look a lot different just with those two guys taking off. So we have changed things up. We're going with this as our question of the week that we are going to uh, dive into over the course of this Falcons final whistle podcast. Um, For those of you used to the post game pod format with all the ticking clocks and buzzers, we were skipping that during the off season, but the final whistle, cause we have the final word on this. Okay. What we say right. goes, that's important for everyone to know. Uh, I'm glad you're making that stand. <laughs> yeah, I am. Well, I'm, I'm trying to keep the Falcons final whistle, the name of the podcast relevant, right? Like I, right. I have to. So. Yeah. It's like, we can't just, we can't follow the same format as what we were doing, but we still have to keep the name because yes. people know the name now. Exactly. <laughs> subscribe and all that stuff uh but anyway um initial thoughts i guess chris we'll start with you initial thoughts on the news of the week whether brady payton both uh what was your take on all that kind of coming down over the course of one week well i think it's a obviously a crazy news week for people doing breaking news and (laughs) that thing but but i think the the brady's retirement is is expected and I don't think that Jeff Darlington and Adam Schefter would have reported that without having credible sources because this is Tom Brady's retirement. It's not 
something that you want to be wrong about, especially from two guys who have proven their credibility on, on this, on these type of things in terms of breaking news, they're usually accurate. So I think the Tom's Tom Brady's dad coming out and uh, reports coming out that he called the bucks. I think, Though that could possibly be because he wanted to do it on his own terms. He has his video. Um, he has his own. He comes out with cool videos. He has the man of the arena. So it could could be one of those things. And then as as for Sean Sean Payton, obviously he like you said he's an institution in New Orleans. Took that franchise from from nothing and and changed things around. So obviously a crazy week for the NFC South. We're gonna dive into um, all that stuff. Really, we're gonna talk about. Um, how Brady is going to impact the Bucks? how losing uh, Sean Payton is going to impact the Saints. If you're the Falcons, what are you thinking about all this? And does this news change anything about uh, how the Falcons should proceed over the course of this offseason? Uh, before we do all that, we got to thank our sponsor, sticking with us. A big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. So now we can get into this. We've already kind of touched on it, right? Is Tom going to retire or not, right? And it's, again... Adam Schefter, uh, he's, he's he's pretty dialed in, I would say. <laughs> yes. Make according to my sources, Adam Schefter is very good at his job, uh, and so nonetheless, um, the expectation is that Brady will retire. Tom Brady is Tom Brady. You never know, but let's operate under the assumption here, so we don't have to keep repeating, reported, and ESPN and all that. But let's just assume that the expectation is that, and for this conversation, that he's going to retire. If he doesn't, we'll have a whole nother pod and that'll be fun. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll read, we won't redo the pod. We'll just continue the same pod and you can yeah, just 100%. like, you can just listen to it back to back. That way it's <laughs> right. just one continuation. So um, if we're operating under the expectation that he is going to retire and make his announcements and that Peyton is leaving, the first question written by Tori McElhaney, if you're the Falcons, how <laughs> do you feel about Peyton and Brady retiring as you go into the off season? If you're Arthur Smith, and Matt Ryan and Terry Fontenot, what's your reaction to the news over the course of the last week? So um, there's this picture of Arthur Smith that I find to be <laughs> the funniest picture in the history of the 2021 football season. And it's a picture that it's like a screen grab of a press conference that we had with him probably a month and a half ago, two months ago now. And it's this really like sinister, like looking like small smile and it's perfect. It's, it's the perfect picture in my mind. And I tweet it out quite often. So if y'all don't follow me on Twitter, go, go to my like Twitter account and it'll be on there because I've already tweeted it. Um, but that picture is how I feel the Falcons organization feels about the Saints no longer having Sean Payton and the Bucks no longer having Tom Brady. It's just like this sinister little smile that you're not like, it's not an overly expressive smile, but the smile is there. And that's how I feel like they feel about this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'll be in the uh, promotional tweet thread of the pod so you can see exactly what Tori's <laughs> talking about. Just dial it right in there. It's, uh, it's, it's a wry smile. He, he's in on a secret. Uh, he, is. Uh, and, he knows something that we don't. <laughs> yeah. But nonetheless, I, I think it's, it can't be anything but good for the Falcons, right? I'm sure that right. they're excited about the prospect because they had the greatest of all time and the reigning Super Bowl champs in the division. And they had a team that's been a perennial playoff contender for, I don't know, ever basically right over the last 10 or 15 years, they've always been in it. And when you have those types and you could take Drew Brees departure from a year before as another sign of those teams weakening. So I think they have to be excited about it, yeah. about, about the prospects of being able to move up within their own division, winning the divisions, the only way you're going to get a home game. Um, and so it's a good thing. I don't think, you know, we should start rearranging the divisional hierarchy just yet or assuming the, <laughs> the Falcons are going to jump right to the front. Uh, 
Chris, uh, you know, kind of what's your take on all this? If you're go, go inside the mind of, of Terry Fontenot of, of the Falcons brass, you know, like their reaction to this and what is a realistic expectation of where the Falcons sit um, after these uh, two pieces of big news? I mean, I, I think they should be popping bottles. Yeah. <laughs> I would be doing <laughs> oh, I mean, the, I mean, the, the expectation has changed now. The expectation has changed because the, uh, as, I mean, I think we're going to get there, but the, the books have 19 free agents. Ooh, uh, yep. Of which Ryan Jensen, Dominican Sue, Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette, Gronk, OJ Howard, um, it's not just Brady who's leaving. That, that if, if, if it was just Brady who was leaving, the Bucs would be a very attractive team for a superstar quarterback who would want to leave, i.e. one in Green Bay, one in Seattle, yep. you know. But with all those guys gone, it's not an ideal situation for any quarterback, much less, you know, Kyle Trask or, or whoever they, they might want to bring in. The Saints, on the other hand, have uh, a cap situation. Um, as well as they, they still have two two great playmakers, obviously on, on the offensive end, and, and Michael Thomas and, and Alvin Kamara. But I think, like I said, I think the Falcons should feel really good, and they should be popping bottles, like I said, <laughs> and they should feel really good about, about their chances. I think what I was thinking earlier is their their mindset should change. I don't think um, I think they should believe that they have a shot, a better shot than they did coming into this season at winning the division. Yeah, it's. Uh is Matt Ryan the best quarterback in the division? I, I think right now that's unquestioned. Now there will be moves to be made. Uh, Bruce Arians, uh, we, um, it was Tori's birthday yesterday. So the three of us were hanging out for a little bit. Happy birthday. We, are, <laughs> thank you. We thank you. <laughs> are we going to sing? Um, the no, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners don't want to hear that. Uh, but one thing that uh, a topic that, that did get brought up is, I mean, like Bruce Arians is walking on the sideline, like with some help, like with slings and braces and things. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, does he, I, I would like to ask him, does he have the motivation to want to bring up a young 22 year old pup and develop him and, and do a longer term thing? Or does he want somebody who can get in there and make another go at it? And, and that was kind of said, under the assumption, under forgetting everything that Chris just brought up, right? That they were holding that that defense, which was old in general, and all these free agents kind of holding it together with 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 duct tape and to get that to get that next ring. Right now, maybe that all falls apart because Brady leaves. So uh, I, there are many more dominoes to fall here, and I think it's going to be interesting, um, you know, to see how this plays out. But I I really think Tampa could definitely take. A couple steps back. That said, they still got some weapons, uh, but that team could look a lot different and a lot more vulnerable uh, moving forward. Yeah, and I think like you, you think about it. I think they look vulnerable. And then I know I, I said this in our little. Uh, so for for these podcasts, we always do like a written roundtable that goes along with these podcasts, and uh, we talk about a lot of the same questions. And and something that I said in regards to the Saints is that like. I don't, I, I feel like Sean Payton was the Saints. And I felt like when you had Sean Payton as this offensive play caller, who I personally think, like, you got to put respect on Sean Payton's name as being one of the, the best, I think, offensive play callers of the last decade. I mean, I, I, I really do think that you can put that respect on his name to be that kind of guy. And when you have that kind of guy who, like what we were talking, talking about earlier, had Drew Brees and had all these different weapons and and then Drew Brees retires and now Sean Payton retires. And it's like the Saints look very different than what they did. And, and especially when you're taking away the, the offensive mind that is Sean Payton, I think this Saints team also, I can't help but think that they would take a step back regardless of who comes in. Because I feel like when you have a guy like Sean Payton, he attracts these offensive players that I think would mean a lot to what the Saints are doing. And I don't know if you have that anymore. So I think if you're looking at the Saints too, like they also, I think are in a really weird situation. We obviously know how bad the cap is in New Orleans. Like we all, we obviously know of that situation. So the fact that all these things are kind of compounded together, you have Brady li leaving with a bunch of free agents leaving over there. You have Sean Payton leaving and the, the Saints being in salary cap hell. I mean, 
I just feel I'm I'm with Chris. Like if you're the Falcons, you're sitting there like we feel like we're on the up and up. Whereas I don't know if the Bucks and the Saints would feel that way right now. Right. Now the question is if you looked at where the like where the Falcons were sitting within the division um, and areas where they struggled, and we've taken a look and written a lot about the Falcons' needs and the Falcons' salary cap situation and a lot of different things, uh, and the the fact that they're a bit hamstrung by you know uh, really quote unquote I don't know, going for it, but do they have the resources required to be able to make the upgrades necessary to jump into that championship spot? I mean, that's a question. I'm not really sure where I sit there. I, you know, right. um, you know, in terms of going for it, that's another thing. I, I think they should stay as disciplined as possible. We can kind of spend, you know, the last portion of it kind of falconizing this whole thing. Um, you know, so do they have enough resources to get the type of things that they need? I, I think they've got to be disciplined, though, for as much as you could say, all right, these two things are leaving. Um, th these two big names and big important parts of those teams are leaving. Does that mean that they like do some more salary cap trickery or do they try to get out of the situation that they're in? Do they try to build the team the old fashioned way or does this change their mindset? I think it should stay. I, I think their mindset mindset should remain and not change. Yeah. yeah, well, but, I mean, you think about it like uh, when you think about it, like the the Bucks and the Saints are going to do what they got to do in order to win, in order to rebuild with like their teams. So like everybody's following kind of the same pattern here, where they want to build championship level teams and winning teams and competitive teams and et cetera, et cetera, and all the cliches that we hear all the time. They're all wanting to do the exact same thing. Same thing. So the Falcons should absolutely want to stick to their own personal blueprint and path that they want to follow with Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith. And so I think like, I, I agree. I don't think anything that happens with the Saints, anything that happens with Tampa Bay changes the Falcons overall plan. I think it's going to be interesting because I think it honestly puts Matt Ryan and his future in a honestly a little bit more secure space. And I may be the only one who thinks that, but when I think about the fact that when you look at the quarterback's, across this division and you have Matt Ryan and then you have everybody else like a couple rungs down in terms of experience and production. If you're the Falcons and you're sitting there and you have Matt Ryan for, you know, at least two years, if you want to play, if you want to go to the end of his contract, I mean, I think that's a pretty good position to be in, especially if you can build around. And this goes back to what we were talking about in the former pod, the, the, the last podcast we did where I was saying build around Matt Ryan so that when you do have, the, his successor coming in there's pieces already in place and you're not rebuilding a full team you're just getting a guy at the quarterback position who can grow into this team that you already kind of have built around him so I think that to me is almost reinforcing what I think we talked about last week yeah I was gonna say too I don't I don't think it's necessary that the Falcons don't have to deviate from their plan at all to hypothetically win to or to think that they can win the division next year the Falcons can stick to to what they to their plan um because I don't think that like I said before that it, it's very possible Tom Tom Brady attracted a lot of people to that team now a lot of those people are not going to to be attracted to that team anymore I mean outside of the weather the the Saints <laughs> are like I mentioned their cap situation they may be in a situation where they bring on someone and maybe they, they want to get rid of some of those, uh, you know, bigger contracts like a Williams, Williams contract or who knows. They, they might be in a situation where they want to get rid of those contracts. The, those teams might look a lot different next year. The Falcons don't need to go out and mortgage something or, 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 or deviate from whatever they're doing. I just think they should think that with the guys we have and whatever we do with, with what we have, we have a team here that can compete in this division a lot better than we did coming into last season i yeah. think it's a mindset shift yeah and and i think that that's that's better said than how i put it because like that is true and i the the question i asked was can they with the resources they have can they make the upgrades required and the way to to more success for them i think is is more firepower in areas where they've been lacking, which is obviously in the pass rush, they got to restock yep. at, at wide receiver, no matter what happens. You look at, you look at what Debo Samuel's been able to do 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, you look at what Arthur Smith had success with. I mean, AJ Brown's, um, he's a big dude, you know, uh, get some people who can go out there and break some tackles, get some people who can dominate the line of scrimmage that they can find ways to, to get those things done. Even if it's on, you know, one year contracts or whatever to find pieces that can, that can achieve those goals, then yeah. I mean, it, it in terms of that mindset shift, it is crazy to, to think that these two things and the dominoes that may fall afterward from what Chris was saying is that you feel like, Maybe they can make a run at it, man. Maybe they can. I mean, C Cincinnati's in the Super Bowl. They were ten and seven, right? Oh, I was. Yeah. I, I, hold on. I, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't talking about the Super Bowl. But no, I'm not I mean no. But like, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, they could get to ten wins, right? <laughs> ten wins could win that division. I, I was not. So I'm not saying anything about ten wins or anything like that. I'm, <laughs> Chris is pumping <laughs> the brakes, man. Yeah, no. I'm not, I'm not, that boat at all i'm thinking <laughs> i was thinking more <laughs> i'm thinking more like you know this is this is a division that could that could look a lot like how people look at the nfc east a few years ago is what i'm thinking okay, okay. that so everything comes down as opposed to the falcons surging up necessarily yeah. that, that, I'm not saying that the falcons aren't going to get better i'm just saying that i i don't think that yeah, I wasn't saying like Super Bowl or anything like that. I'm just saying that they can compete in this division what they have, and they they I don't think they need to make moves. I wasn't thinking Super. Who knows? Maybe, but I wasn't. I was thinking that. Not saying wrong. Just saying I was. <laughs> I gotta find like one sentence that you said, and then I'll pull it, take it out of context, and like have our folks like make a graphic and it'd be Legit. like Chris Rim dot 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 Super Bowl dot 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 falcons victory I, I I, honestly, i'll find a way to put you in a bad position i, can do I that. honestly don't i don't think that i've ever seen chris rim sweat as much as he's sweating right now like i <laughs> in, like honestly like chris is the like most calm cool and collective of us three and he was really worried about that just now i oh, i man. i had to point it out I had no, to. i'm definitely gonna do it i'm definitely gonna do it yeah no i mean i really you know, I was taking like leaps on the moon, you know? Oh, <laughs> hey, 10 wins. Cincinnati got the 10 wins. Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe Burrow. Right? Joe Burrow. <laughs> Joe uh, Burrow. <laughs> but I do see what you're saying, though, that, that this division could look more like what the NFC East has recently, really what the um, what the AFC South has kind of looked like at, at, at times in the recent past. So I think for all those things, it's going to be fascinating. And I think that the NFC South, as we kind of wrap this thing up here, I think the NFC South is going to be a really interesting division to watch this off season now, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Falcons have, that they have, what are they going to do with Calvin Ridley, right? What are they going to do with that number eight overall pick? Who's the Saints coach going to be? Or who's the offensive coordinator if it's Dennis Allen, right? Who's going to be the Buccaneers quarterback? There's a lot of major questions that are going to have an impact on how this thing plays out. And to maybe if I can get Chris's point correctly this time, that there's a <laughs> heading into last season, you really felt like, okay, Tom Brady, right? Like the, the Bucs are the reigning Super Bowl champs. They are expected to be the NFC South champions right that, that that was a fair and accurate assumption you can walk into this season depending upon how it all shakes out and you can be like like who's gonna win the nfc south and be like i don't know i have no idea and that makes for fun football even if it's very close to 500 football Not i mean cancer. i think you i I, <laughs> I think you think back to even like this whole entire season i tell people all the time like this entire like nfl season was one of the weirdest seasons because you always felt like at any point in time during every single Sunday, somebody could come out of left field and beat somebody else. And it never like, it, and it never felt like there was like significant front runners, even, I don't know, even as we came down the stretch, it felt that way. Uh, so the more of that we get, I think the better the NFL is overall. I mean, you look at these playoff games that have just been absolutely amazing football over the course of the last like what month and I'm here if everybody wants to beat up on everybody I'm here for it yeah I think it's gonna be interesting I think 
you know, as Chris said, the Falcons are going to win the Super Bowl. I, I think that's an important thing. <laughs> quote, like Chris that. Ram. Quote, Chris Ram, uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> nonetheless, um, yeah, I think this is a fun, timely discussion. I, I think it really, it, it does, as you guys both said, that you stick to the plan, but there has to be a mindset shift, right? That there, there ha- has to be a thing like, okay, like it's there for us. Um, and that's obviously what the Falcons have, what Terry Fontenot has always said was that he, he doesn't use the word rebuild, thinks it's insulting. And he wants to try to win as many games and be as competitive as possible while he gets this team right for a prolonged period of sustained success. If you can jump in and get into the, um, get into the, you know, serious playoff contention, right? Or you can really fight for the division in year two and then still continue to evolve and develop, you know, so, uh, that's really, um, you know, the way to go. So moral of the story, what we've learned, stick to the plan, change your mindset. Um, and, you know, maybe uh, good things can come of it. So as always, thank you guys so much for, for joining us on another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Do what you uh, do what we'd like you to do. Hopefully, um, five star rating, nice review, pretty pleased. We've gotten some recently, and thank you very much for that. We also got a lot of good engagement and interaction with fans in the mailbag and in YouTube yeah. comments about the last pod. So I'm I'm really glad that you that you all like this off season format. Uh, we're gonna keep coming um, with uh, different stuff as well. Everyone was really invested in my dating app stories. So if I get any more, I'll make sure and pass it along on the pod. (laughs) I think that is required. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) Absolutely. Got to do it. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining in. Don't forget, take a look at the story, uh, which is on the website. We got a bunch of cool stuff coming up here. Chris is in Alabama for the senior bowl. So look out for content on that. We got some pro bowlers. Coming up in Vegas next week, uh, the NFL season never stops, really. So anyway, thank you guys for joining. Talk to you next week.